understand because see, if you want to get filled with the Holy Ghost, you got to get a little bit of knowledge of who God is. Yes, yes. Sometimes we think we can pretend with God. You can't pretend with God. He knows your very thoughts. Your, he probably know more about your thoughts than you know about your thoughts. So today, we want to talk about how the Lord knows God, knowing your thoughts. And I want you to first turn with me to Matthew chapter 9. Listen, y'all bear with me because I got a lot of notes, but I'm going to try my best. If I can't, we'll do it next Sunday. And I want you to think about this. Jesus didn't have to have anybody tell him anything. He knew everything. That's right. He knew your very thoughts. Did y'all know that? Look, some of y'all need to really think. When you think you get you and you think you're deceiving people, or you think people, mama, daddy, cousins, they don't know, that, that's not who you should worry about. That's right. God knows. Mm -hmm. that's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's where conviction comes from for me, is that I know God saw what I was thinking and God know what I did. You definitely don't have to wait till I do it. You already know what I'm thinking. So I am easy to repent. And I hope this leads you not to be perfect, but to repentance. So that you don't think that you have to. See, the issue that I want you to see with this whole message is keep a pure heart. This is the best way to live your life in Christ, keeping a pure heart. That way, you don't have to be phony saying one thing, believing another thing, and then get convicted at night. Why did I do that? You know, we do it for fear. We do it because people are going to talk about us, whatever the reason is. But it's always best to have a pure heart before God. But I want you to see a few scriptures to show you that God indeed knew what people were thinking. Listen. I'm going to read a few scriptures today, if you don't mind. Matthew chapter 9, verse 1. Jesus stepped into a boat, crossed over, and came to his own town. Some men brought to him a paralyzed man lying on a mat. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. Now the first thought they may have is, how does he know this man is sin? How does he, how does he know this or that? See, some people like to link his being paralyzed to his sin. That's not, Jesus is not linking his physical condition to his sin. He just already know. Somebody say he already know. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So he, these people are listening to him and they are like, who does he think he is? And at this, some of the teachers of the law said to themselves, this fellow is blaspheming. Read it with me. Knowing their thoughts, Jesus said, why do you entertain evil thoughts in your hearts? Read it again. Why do you entertain evil thoughts in your hearts? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the paralyzed man, get up, take your mat, and go home. Then the man got up and went home. When the crowd saw this, they were filled with awe, and they praised God, who had given such authority to man. man. Yeah. Listen, Jesus knew the man was sin. But well, first of all, we all have sinned. But he knew specifically what this man's sins were. Oh, he knew. And he knew yours. And he knows mine. See, confession comes because of conviction. It doesn't come because God got to know your sins, because God already knows them. That's right. You're not telling him anything new. But did you know when you were yet a sinner, Christ died for you? Right. That he loved you while you were a sinner? That your sins do not keep him from loving you? Will not keep you from being healed by him? Some people get so religious. You're not healed because you're still out there. You're not this, you're not that. This is why this happened. This is why. You know, I've learned that God don't link nothing to his love for you. It's not conditional. Somebody say it's not conditional. Not conditional. You need to get free. You need to get free of your own conviction and thoughts by knowing who God is. That's right. See, God called these people evil because they have evil thoughts. 
And we have evil thoughts. It's evil for someone to think they wish somebody get sick and die. It's evil for someone to think, I wish that this person can get out of my life. It's so evil for us to think evil of others. But we got to take those thoughts captive, not in the sense that it's something about us that got to take them captive. We need to understand, uh-oh, God know what I'm thinking about this person. God know what I feel about this person. God knows I don't like my name. Why? I just have to deal with that and repent and ask him to clean my heart. Mm -hmm. You know, David was a man who had lots of sinfulness in his life, if you will. But the Lord says he's a man after my own heart. Right. Why? Because David knew how to repent. You see, I've learned a long time ago, if I stay, if I keep my heart in a state of full repentance, I don't have to worry about not being humble. You see, I got to be there all the time in repentance. You say, well, why you got to always think you got to repent? Well, I'm just heading off the devil, people. I just like to think in humility, I'm never just quite right with God. I want to be 100%, but my Bible tells me I'll be perfected when I get there. But for now, I, I want to see, get all what, what Lucinda used to tell me when she went to a guy that she, like this ministry was real good, get the bubbles out. I'm going to get the bubbles out. You know? I don't want to just uh, be saved. I want to get the bubbles out. You know, the little things. The Bible says, and, and the little foxes fall in mind. So today, I want you to know that God knows your thoughts. That's a good reason for you to stay in some form of repentance and not, not always looking to see what other people are doing to you, but look at your own heart. I, I want your heart so ready after this message to next Sunday, maybe the Holy Ghost will move in a powerful way for us. Because God, David said, create me a clean heart and a steadfast spirit. You see, David knew how to pray. You say, well, he was a man chosen by God. But David knew, create me a clean heart. Yes. All the stuff I've done, just make my heart be clean. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, I got lots of scriptures. I'm going to have to go to the Old Testament a little, a little while. Go with me to Psalm 44. Please bear with me. If I go too long, remember, I, I get you out of here. <laughs> Psalm 44, y'all going? We're going to be in the Psalms for a couple of times and then we're going to go to Samuel. I just want you to see, he's been this way. He didn't just start this when Jesus came. He know your thoughts. Hallelujah. So you just as well to repent. It ain't like you fool with him. Don't you think? Sometimes I used to go to confession when I was Catholic. And I was young, so I just had the same sins every time because I couldn't think of nothing. You see, what was missing in my life then was the Holy Ghost. He will convict you of your sins. I had no conviction. That's why I can go in there and tell that man anything and then go right back out there and do it again because I had no conviction. See, when the Holy Ghost touches you, though, you're convicted. You, you're convicted of things you never thought that you should be repentant of. But today, that's what I want you to see. Just keep your heart clean. Hallelujah. 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 Chapter 44, verse 20 of Psalm. If we have forgotten the name of our God, or spread out our hands to a foreign God, would not God have discovered it? Since he knows, read it with me, since he knows the secrets of the heart, who knows the secrets of the heart? God. God can, you know, God can discover anything that's in your heart. Yeah. He knows the deepest things. He knows the little things. So it's best to purge yourself, don't you think? Do like David. Create me a clean heart. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Go with me to Psalm 94. Yeah. Just so you know. I don't want you to leave this message on the table. I want you to leave here with it. 
because we have the habit of looking at what everybody else do to us, and oh, whoa, what's me? I'm having such a hard time. But if you take a look at your heart, I spent hours doing that. I am a crazy man. I, I am. My wife is just so, well, she tries to help me. But I spend a lot of time in self-reflection. I want to know if I'm right. I'm not looking at to see if you're right. I want to know if I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all with me? Look, Psalm 94. You there? Mm -hmm. Verse 11. Read it with me. The Lord knows all human plans. He knows that you, that they are futile. How many plans he knows? All. Oh. You see, when you're plotting, or you plotting to go with somebody else's wife or husband, or I don't know. You know, God knows what you're doing. When you're plotting, to do anything secretly. Yeah. God knows just what you're doing. Somebody say, God knows. God knows. knows. He knows my thoughts. Hallelujah. Yes. Even if they're not evil, he does know the secrets of your heart. Yes. Hallelujah. And that's a scary thought. That'd be scary to me. See, when you're bad and you know God know it, it's scary. Mm -hmm. Because you don't want to go to him and, and he knows the things that you haven't repented of. So that's why when you get to know God, right. yeah. you get to repent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's right. You get to purge your heart. You don't have to linger with the thoughts anymore because you know, if I get convicted of it, he's faithful yeah. to yeah. forgive me. Yeah. But if I don't repent, he never, that the blood never washes me. So I've got to know what's there, and sometimes we don't, but i got to know what's there so that he can wash me, cleanse me, purge me, and create in me a clean heart. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go with me to 1 Samuel chapter 2. Oh boy. Y'all with me? We're talking about God. We get tired of talking about ourselves. Huh? Let's talk about him. He knows your thoughts, man. He knows Yep. That's why people say, did you, do you know so-and-so? Do you know this person did this type of thing? I know who does know. So they might fool me, but you can't fool God. And I'm okay if you fool me because most of the time I don't want to know. First Samuel. Oh, that's arrogance. God forgive me. First Samuel. Chapter 2, y'all there? Beat Verse 3. Read it with me. Do not keep talking so proudly, but let your mouth speak such arrogance. For the Lord is a God who knows, and by him deeds are weighed. He not only know them, he knows how bad they are. He knows how, how little what they can do to you. He's weighed. He's weighed. Boy, how you like that? God not only knows the thoughts of your heart, but he's weighing them. And while you're there praying and praying and praying, why is my prayers going up? God's looking at your heart. Yeah. Yeah. Your heart is like a piece of lead holding that balloon from floating up. Mm -hmm. This was in your heart. That's right. Today, I want you to feel convicted. I want you to say, create me a clean heart. I want you to look down in your heart. I want you to stop looking at somebody else and that makes you mad when you walk in the house and say, now why does that make me mad? Why can't I walk in the house without getting angry? Y'all know where I'm coming from? Yeah. Listen, go with me to 1 Samuel 16. Ugh. We're talking about God knowing your thoughts and he's weighing them too, huh? Yeah. Verse, verse 7. Y'all with me? You going to read it with me? But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. In other words, I've rejected the son that looks like a king. I'm looking for the one that don't look like one. But it's horse right. Listen, people. It don't look like a movie star. 
But to me, they are. That doesn't look like a king. Eliab looks like a king. Who else? Which one of my sons do you want? Samuel said, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look, read it with me. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, or man looks at the outward appearance. But the Lord what? Looks at the heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may not look what people think is the person to do this, this, and that. But the Lord calls you. He's looking at your heart. Yes. He ain't looking at what people see. He's looking at your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Today, I want you to think about what's in your own heart. Stop worrying about somebody else's. Because only God knows. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, we got some more scriptures. I'm going to keep going. First Kings chapter 8. Ah. Uh, don't want, see, when Jesus did that, I don't want you to think that that was new to him. <laughs> you know, God knows your thoughts. He knows the secrets of your heart. He has weighed them in a balance. Even when you think this is not a big deal, he knows what's a big deal. Yes, indeed. And in First Kings, I told you that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Chapter 8. Let's try verse uh, 38. Just for the sake of time. Let's and listen, read it with me. And when a prayer or a plea is made by anyone among your people Israel, being aware of the afflictions of their what? Own hearts, and spreading out their hands toward this temple. Then read it with me. Then hear from heaven your dwelling place. Forgive and, and act. Deal with everyone according to all they do, since you know, read with their hearts. Read with them. For you alone know every human heart, so that they will fear you all the time they live in the land you give. You gave up our ancestors. In other words, fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You should fear the one who knows your whole heart. Yeah. Don't worry about people who know you just from your outward appearance or the way you act or what they think of you or what they thought of your mama or your daddy. No. Worry about the one who know your whole heart. Yeah, That's where fear should come from. Right. God, you know my heart. Yeah. Scary thought, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, it's scary to me because mm -hmm. I got fear of the Lord and I, it's scary that somebody know your whole heart. So when you're in a conversation, and you pretending you really love somebody and say, oh, I just love you so much. And God say, no, you're lying. <laughs> you don't love them. If you love them, you wouldn't have that in your heart. That's right. I see your heart. The Bible says, out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth should speak. That's right. But we don't really do that, do we? Sometimes we speak what we think people want to hear instead of speaking what's in my heart. Today, I want you to keep a pure heart. Speak from your heart. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, if your heart is pure, you're going to be okay. But if it ain't, you need to purge yourself before you start talking to people too much. Because your heart going to tell on you. See, people can tell by the sound of your words. Some man might know what you're saying. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about? So it's good to just purge your heart so that when you speak, you're speaking the truth. Hallelujah. I love your heart, people. Because God knows what's in it. Hallelujah. Listen, go with me to 1 Chronicles 28. Y'all with me? I could have picked a lot of scriptures, y'all. I prayed about the ones we got. So this, is, this tells it all. First Chronicles 28. Ah. Verse 9. I think I'm in the right place. But a prophet of the Lord named Obed was there and went out to meet the army when he returned. Y'all see that? No, am I right? No, first Chronicles. I'm sorry. 
First Chronicles 28. Did I tell you the first? first. Y'all yes, right, no wrong. First Chronicles 28, verse 9. Read it with me. And you, my son Solomon, acknowledge God of your father and serve him with what? Wholehearted devotion and with a willing mind. For the Lord searches every heart and understands every desire and every thought. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will reject you forever. Consider now, for the Lord has chosen you to build a house as a sanctuary. Be strong and do the Lord. In other words, he's saying, look, you, you're not, I know your heart, but you better serve me wholeheartedly. He said, because, and with a willing mind. Because if you're doing it just to be seen, or you're doing it and you don't want to do it, I don't want that kind of service. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. I want wholehearted service. Wholehearted, right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I already know it's in your heart, so if you're halfway doing if you're going there and you didn't want to cook them beans that day, you should have said, Mr. Lucinda, I ain't cooking your beans today. And Mr. Sender said, oh no, you're going to have to cook them beans. <laughs> I don't care what you say. <laughs> but she serves with a whole heart. Yes. And the beans taste extra good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I'm going to tell you, I want you to know you don't have to perform for nobody yes. but God. Right. Whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he knows what's in your heart. Yes. So why serve him when he knows you're not doing it wholeheartedly? Yes. That's all I want you to see today is God knowing your thoughts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look, if you go with me to uh, Matthew chapter 12, I got so many scriptures, but I'm going to try to end with one of these if you give me some time. And we can start another day. But I think you got the message right. Oh, yeah. Amen. But whatever you do, get this one. Because we need a move of God. And the way to get it is to keep a clean heart. Yeah. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. 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 God is not into games and pretense. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 You know, they coming in with the big old hats. They coming in with rosaries hanging off them. They come in here with robes, long... Is I don't know what. Mm -hmm. But the Lord knows their hearts. Oh, yeah, yeah. You don't have to judge their heart. Yeah. That ain't your job. That's right. God knows. Say God knows. God God knows. knows. Every time you see somebody you think is putting on, just say God knows. It ain't your job to be sitting there trying to figure these people out. Yeah. Say God knows. God God knows. knows. I, don't I don't need to know. I know what I feel. That don't mean I'm right. So that's right. Amen. Chapter 12, verse 25. Read it, but let's start with verse 22. Then they brought him a demon-possessed man who was blind and mute, and Jesus healed him so, they, so that he could both talk and see. Well, that's a serious healing. Yeah. All the people were astonished and said, could this be the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, the religious, when they heard this, they said, it is only by Beelzebub, the prince of demons, that this fellow drives out demons. Oh, boy. Let me tell you something. That is just, that's the definition of blasphemy. Yes. Right there. When you start attributing something that the Holy Spirit did to the devil, you messed up. Mm -hmm. you, should not have been, you should not have been discerning and trying to judge it. In other words... If someone get up here to read a scripture or do something and it's by the Holy Ghost and you say, look, they put it on. Uh-oh, be careful. I'm not trying to scare you. Sometimes we just need to keep our opinions to ourselves. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If God get up here and break out in a song and y'all say you can't sing, <laughs> just say, well, we just give glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then you can tell him, don't do it again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you know, we all, we all just need to have a heart to just go all the way from God. Mm -hmm. yes. We don't need to pretend with each other. Nobody, I can tell you right now, I don't care about your sins. I care about your love. Yes. Hallelujah. I let God deal with the other part. Christmas wrong with you. 
Every time I say something, you start running. Am I saying it wrong? <laughs> Here's something else, y'all. Y'all don't be knowing what I put up with for Christmas. Right? He's a man of God, though. We, we blessed to have him, don't y'all think? Yes, yes. Listen, I want you to look at your heart as I finish speaking right now. Now here they are, they're trying to discern that Jesus did something by the devil. Mm -hmm. But he did it by the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Somebody start praying in tongues in here, somebody told you that's the devil, and you say that's the devil, you done messed up. God got a lot of more mysteries you don't understand. It's best to leave it to him. Listen. Jesus knew, read it with me, Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and every city or household divided against itself will not stand. If Satan drives out Satan, he is divided against himself. How can, how then can this kingdom stand? And if I drive out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do you, do your people drive them out? So then they will be your judges, said with me. They will be your judges. But if it is by the Spirit of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today, I just want you to look into your own heart. I just want you to know that even the apostles didn't do that. And they had to learn the hard way. I got one scripture to end with, and it's about them. And it's about the chief one. Acts 15. While you turn it there, we're just going to read the scripture and leave, so I don't want you to feel too convicted because they had to deal with their hearts. They didn't really believe the Gentiles could receive the Holy Ghost. They didn't even believe the Gentiles could get saved. It was in their heart that way. But Peter saw this net coming down and scared the heck out of him when God chastised him about that, didn't he? So Peter got this thing straight and went and preached to Cornelius, who was a Gentile, and Cornelius' whole household started praying in tongues. Why? They had a pure heart. Yes. See, that's what a pure heart would do for you. The gifts of God will fall into your heart. Mm -hmm. You made room for him. Listen, we're going to finish with this one. So you open your heart up to anything you, God, can do with you. Huh? That's right, in Acts chapter 15. Let's go down to verse 8. Y'all there? Read it with me. God who knows the heart showed that he accepted them by giving the Holy Spirit to them just as he did to us. He did not discriminate between us and them. Read it with me. For he purified their hearts by faith. How you get a pure heart? Hallelujah. He purified the Gentiles' hearts by faith. The Jews think they inherited it. So they didn't really think the other people could get it. But because they had faith in Jesus Christ, God start purifying their hearts. As I'm speaking today, God is purifying yours. And he's purifying mine. Today, just look into your own heart. Hallelujah. Don't go by what people think of you. Just go into your heart. And if you got something to repent of, just do it. You know that's not the thing. Just do it. Just do it. Do it. Your God knows already. He's just waiting for you to confess your sin to him. Purge me. Clean me. Cleanse me. Even with his up. Make me a pure heart. Create me a pure heart. The Bible says in the Beatitudes, Jesus says, Blessed are the pure heart, for they shall see God. Man, what a wonderful thing. Blessed are the pure in heart. And they shall see God. What a better thing. Isn't that what we're living for? Yes. Keep your heart pure so that you can see God. 
so the gifts of God can fall on you. There's so much more of God. Don't judge nothing before it's time. Just say, Lord, I need more. I need more. Come into my heart. Oh, God, purge me and remove the thoughts that are not yours. Cast down the imaginations that are not yours. Remove the guilt that shouldn't be there. Remove the condemnation that shouldn't be there. But you said, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Love that song, Grace, has brought you this home. You know why? Because it's only about this. Today, don't worry about who say what about you. I know all the list of things people say about me. You'll be sitting here saying, ooh, I don't want that pastor. I don't want people say this or say that. I do not care. What I do care is what he knows. Yes, yes. And he knows the truth. Hallelujah. Yeah. How many of y'all know the truth that set you free? How many want to be free? Yeah. All right, let's just tell it all to the Lord tonight on your bed when you sleep. Today I just want to pray for you that you just keep a clean heart. Almighty God, bless your people, Lord. Lord, let us keep a clean heart. Let us love each other with a pure heart. Let us serve you wholeheartedly. It's only you know a man's heart. Oh God, I surrender to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Good afternoon once again, church family. I won't tell you much of your time, but the door of the church is not open. To me, we offer you the invitation. Now, I won't keep you long, like I said, but the pastor preached a good sermon. Let's give the Lord a hand clap in the room. Give the Lord a hand clap in the room. Give the Lord a hand clap in the room. You know? Like I said, God knows your heart. I ain't going to dwell on that too long, but you know how your heart feels and how you feel and where you should be at. God knows your heart. You can fool man, me, everybody, but you can't fool God. You know? So you know where you need to be and where your heart is, but God knows your heart better than you do. And I leave it at that. Once again, the door to the church is now open. If you want to repent or you come up, you want to give yourself to God, come up. Because He knows your heart. Let's give his brother a hand clap and come up. Once again, like I said, God knows you. Jesus' name, amen. amen. 